Welcome to the Salem TV News Break. I'm your host, Marie Sanders, keeping you informed of what's happening around Salem and around the nation. And with me again... Who, who? me? Yes, you. <laughs> Couldn't be. <laughs> how are you today, Pastor Bright? I'm doing wonderful, Marie. How are you today? I'm doing well, doing well. Just thanking God just for another week and another day, another yes. opportunity to give us Salem and our other viewers uh, what's going on and keeping them informed. So yeah. um, I know that earlier you were uh, at your desk and you were looking up some of the local uh, stati statistics. That's right. <laughs> as far as COVID-19. The stats. The stats. I'll That's just right. say it, trying to be so. Yeah. Just say stats. Just say stats. <laughs> looking at the local stats as far as COVID-19. So you want to uh, share that with us? Sure. In fact, um, we've been working really hard here at Salem United Methodist Church and throughout the United Methodist Church connection to um, get ready to go back whenever that happens. Uh, we are not ready to come back into the sanctuary yet, and the numbers bear that out. Um, so far in Orange County, there have been 1,007 tests taken uh, or given out, reported in Orange County. Of those 1,007, 84 have been positive. 831 were negative, and 92 are still pending. Those are the total number of tests that have been um, uh, reported in Orange County. Orange County has 83,293 residents, and only 1,007 tests have been taken. Let's put some perspective on that. This morning, uh, this is Wednesday morning when we are recording this, uh, the news said that 83,200 people had been, uh, have died so far from coronavirus. That is nearly the size of our entire county. Uh, that should drive home to you how important it is for us to maintain our social distancing guidelines. Uh, we have seen that throughout the state of Texas for the last nine days, the average death rate or the average new case rate has been right at 1,000 people. It hasn't dipped enough to, for me to represent a statistical deviation from that uh, 1,000 a day number, which means that we are still very much in the middle of this epidemic, epidemic here in Orange County. My goal has always been, and I've said this to um, all of the ministers in town and all of our church members, is that the bishop did not send me to Salem United Methodist Church to lose a single church member to COVID-19. I have to have a zero body count as it concerns COVID-19. I am not willing to come back into this sanctuary for the worship services until I have more assurance that our most vulnerable members are protected. How will they be protected? By wide, comprehensive testing of asymptomatic um, people. People who don't seem to be showing symptoms need to be tested. And if we could blanket this city, if we had 83,000 tests to give out in Orange County, we could go back to church tomorrow. Because at that time, we would know exactly where the virus is. But right now, going back into public is like going back blind. We don't know where the virus is. We don't know where it's spreading. And the numbers that we see now, those 84 positive cases in Orange County, were all, they all contracted this disease six to eight weeks ago. So as we reopen, we won't see the uh, consequences of a relaxing of social distancing until the end of June. So I um, intend to maintain uh, as much caution as I can. The Texas Annual Conference is um, having um, a seminar, a webinar this week uh, hosted by the Woodlands United Methodist Church and our Bishop um, Scott Jones. And they were, um, and, and uh, I have invited our church leadership to come and participate in that webinar. Um, after we have seen what the district and the conference have planned and, and the information that they have available for us, 
then we will have enough information to call a church-wide meeting for ourselves. I'm not going to set a date for it right now because I don't know what information I'll be getting this afternoon. But once I find out what the uh, conference um, has in store and what the district is planning for reopening, we will be, we'll have enough information to start a church-wide conversation here at Salem United Methodist Church. So, Marie, as soon as we know right. uh, what's going on with the district and the conference, we'll be able to consider coming back into the sanctuary, but not until. Not until then. And, Pastor, that's wisdom. That's right. That's wisdom. You know, um, I was at a restaurant, not in the restaurant, but I drove up to mm -hmm. get something mm -hmm. to go. And I was almost about to go in, and I said, no, it's just too soon. That's right. Just wait. Take the food home and enjoy mm -hmm. it at home. You That's know. Right. But as I was sitting there, I saw so many people going in, even with little children, mm -hmm. uncovered. You know, and I, I just began to pray for them, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that God would cover. Well, one of the things that one of the statistics that really struck me was that um, uh, of the 83,000 Americans who died so far, they believe that 50 percent more. You know, so we're talking about um, uh, around 42 thousand more people may have died because of this virus we're pushing um the death total into the hundreds of thousands already and they don't know um uh, of all of the people who got sick and just went home and died alone right so it's going to be a long this uh, pandemic is extremely extremely uh virulent and dangerous yes we had a uh, meeting with the orange um, uh, Pastors and Ministers Alliance last night, a, a Zoom meeting, and I know Marie Sanders um, was there. My mother, Dr. Mildred Bright, was one of the experts who spoke. We heard from the uh, superintendent of schools here at West yes. Orange Stark, and it was very good information. But the, the thing that I want to impress upon you is that this is a matter of life and death. If you don't want to die, if you don't want to find yourself on a, on a respirator or see any of your family members die, stay home. Stay home. You don't have to get out. Don't get out. Continue to wash your hands um, as often as you can. Make sure that you wash your hands. Get some hand sanitizer. Make sure that you sanitize yourself when you get out of your car to go to the store and when you get back into your car before you close your car door. Put some hand sanitizer on so you don't infect the inside of your car. There are common sense things that we all know how to do, that we must double, triple our effort now because the word out there is telling us that it's not as bad as it could be or that, it, it, that this pandemic is, um, is, not, uh, is reducing. And that is not the case. Not the it case. is just as dangerous today as it was back at spring break when we started sheltering in place. So please, Salem United Methodist Church, use that common sense and stay safe. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor, for this update. And let's just take heed and govern ourselves accordingly. Yes. It is real. It is real. We'll be right back after this. I'm Bijou Bright. And I'm Bella Bright. And this is the Arts and Crafts segment. Today we will be making some cool paper dolls that you can change the clothes with automatically using some paper and some plastic solo clear cups. Yes. So, Bella, tell me how we're going to be doing this. Okay, so basically everything that you'll need is two clear cups. Um, I believe they're called crystal clear. And then you go online and you find these paper doll cutouts. You can just search paper dolls and a whole bunch will come up on images. Um, I already started cutting some out, so this is what it kind of looks like. Uh, so first what you do is you take your first cup and you cut out your paper doll. And you put some tape on it and you glue it to the, I mean tape it to the inside like this. Mm. Um, this is your base. You don't really have to mess with it after you've done this. 
So now I'm picking out an outfit for my paper doll and I chose this little dress. Now I personally like to put the um, dresses on the inside and things like that, but it's way easier to put it on the outside. I just prefer it on the inside. Um, and if you do want to do it on the inside, you can use a highlighter to mark out where her body is and it rubs right off. So just in case you'd like to do that, but I'm going to do it on the outside for this one. So what you do is you put it, the second cup on top of the paper doll and you see where she is and you kind of see where you want to put it. Okay. So now we get a little bit of tape. You can also use glue if you'd like. But um, it takes way longer for it to dry and it could smudge around. And so what you do is you look at her and you see exactly how to line it up. Like that. Now, of course, it Just comes with... like that. Yep. And so it comes with a whole bunch of accessories and stuff that you can cut out and some extra shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, then you just put three more or four more, how many more that you can put, and that's how you automatically cage it. Cool. It looks very, very fancy. It is. Mm -hmm. Now, I already have one that I already did because it takes a little time, and I didn't want to waste any of yours. So what I did is I got this one, and I gave her a little makeover. Like that, or... I like this one the best. I think I like the pants on her. Wow. And now you can play with them, and then you can just have her outfits, you know, change so easily. Fashionista in the making. Wow. Look at her. Doing fantastic. Yes. Well, that was the arts and crafts segment. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be, the Salem TV news break will be right back. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Now for some special announcements. Thank you to Brother Donnie Hunter and Brother Benny Smith for delivering 50 roses to the mothers of Salem for Mother's Day. Thank you so much for your labor of love. Memorial Day is coming up, and we're asking the members of Salem to please email pics of veterans to SalemTVCares at gmail.com. Please email those to us as soon as possible. On last Sunday, we had 57 viewers for our worship service. Please remember to continue to share our Sunday morning services with your family and your friends. The financial report for this week was not available at the time of our taping. Now for a special message from Bishop Scott Jones concerning annual conference. In this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, I as bishop want to say thank you for being the church. I'm hearing so many great stories about how United Methodist Churches and the Texas Annual Conference are making a difference for Christ under very difficult conditions. And I just want to say God bless you and thank you for all that you're doing. I'm announcing today that we are postponing the regular session of the Texas Annual Conference. It was scheduled to meet May 24 to 27. And instead, we're going to postpone the full annual conference until August 14th and 15th. We're planning a two-day session to be held at the Woodlands United Methodist Church beginning at 10 a.m. on August 14th and ending with the ordination and commissioning service at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, probably ending around 3. Between now and then, some other things will happen. For example, we'll have a clergy session virtually by some video conference technology on Tuesday, May 26th. That's one of the dates that had been reserved for annual conference, only this time it will just be the clergy session to take care of the business of the annual conference like that group normally does. We will be rescheduling our uh, pre-conference meetings probably doing them by virtual method in the month of July. You'll hear more about that as time comes on. I just want to say that we're trying to make adjustments. I hope that we can meet face to face at the Woodlands United Methodist Church, but as we're tracking this virus pandemic, we may be making adjustments in the months to come. But as of today, I can say clearly, we're not going to be gathering face to face at the normal time in late May. 
please look for announcements about how we're going to continue to be a connectional church as we reschedule for an August session. God bless you and stay safe. Hi everybody, I'm Bella Bright and I'm going to teach you some chair aerobics today. This is perfect for people who normally don't get around a lot, people who have joint issues, and basically a good easy way to start getting into exercising because I know that no one is thinking about it right now. Okay, first we start with a nice little march. And we do this for 10 seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we put our heels out. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, Woo! Eight, nine, and ten. Now we do the same thing, but we point our toes. Yes. One, two, three, point four, those toes. Five, point six, those toes. Seven, Eight, toes. Nine, ten. Woo! All right, now we go back to marching, but we do a jumping jack motion with our arms. One, two, three, four, yes. five, six, yes. seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Now we make circles. One. Am I doing it right? Two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, hey. eight, Ooh, nine. That's marching. This really is great. I'm serious, you all. One, two. After all those three, rolls I ate last four, night. Five, six, seven, eight. Come on, get moving nine, with us. Ten. Woo! <laughs> that was really hard, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you do it every day, whenever you can, and I'll see you later. <laughs> Grab some Oreos. You'll need about 36. Either put them in a Ziploc bag or a food processor and crush them. It should look something like this. Grab about a spoonful to save for later. Grab about eight ounces of cream cheese and mix it in. After mixing, it'll look something like this. Now you'll need a baking sheet and line it with parchment paper. Roll the mixture into a ball and place it on the sheet. Make some space in your fridge and leave them in there for about 30 minutes. Meanwhile, grab another bowl and pour in some white chocolate chips. Put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. Take them out and mix them around and repeat this until they're melted. After 30 minutes, take them out and put them on a stick. Now they're ready to be dipped in chocolate. Just like that. Put them back onto the parchment paper and pour your Oreo crumbs on them. They're gonna end up looking something like this. So yummy. Put them back into the fridge for 10 more minutes and they're done. Let's try. Welcome back. And once again, Miss Bijou Bright is joining us for our favorite segment, the food segment. Yes. Yes. So the last time we had these uh, Oreo balls, mm -hmm. they were the chocolate. Yes, the classic Oreo balls. But then um, my dad has a friend who doesn't like chocolate. So we were thinking, what if we did it with like golden Oreos? And our video, our TikTok on um, the Oreo balls got 66,000 views and 10,000 likes. 66,000 views? Yeah, we kind of went viral, not trying to brag or anything. It bragged, mm -hmm. it bragged. That mm -hmm. is wonderful. Yes. Wow. So before when we first uh, brought these forth, I was saying how they would be perfect for parties and different things. You could do different flavors. And this is an example right here. So now we're going to take a bite. Let's not wait any longer, yeah. shall we, Stop. madam? Here it goes. So creamy. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Really pretty. See that, y'all? That's so nice. Let's see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. That tastes like cheesecake. It does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. My word is mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't like chocolate, this will be right up your alley. Mm-hmm. Do they have different kinds, too? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I'm going to get back to this. Mm-hmm. And until next time, stay faithful and stay fruitful. <laughs>